Hey everybody, this is Rick and this is a shameless plug for my own stuff. But I also wanted to announce that I'm now selling uh, dry cleaning kits and cold pressing and hot pressing boards in custom cut sizes. This is pressing board. It is thick aluminum. I'll show a little video about them soon. Uh, why would you pay money for this and why is it useful? Um, first of all, uh, why is it useful? It's useful because in the, the very basic sense is most of your laminating presses are only heated from the top. And then you flip the comic book over and you have to heat the other side. Uh, having this allows you to preheat the bottom, put the book in and then preheat. You can heat it from both sides at once and it saves you that, that amount of time of stopping and reheating the book from both sides. That's the very basic, basic sense of it. Uh, the other thing it does is provides even pressure on, across the surface of a book, or it, it's especially useful if you're doing multiple books at once. It really helps with that. Um, it also helps distribute the heat evenly across the top of a book uh, if you're pressing it from both sides at once. Now, the second question, why would you pay a lot of money? I think this is like, I don't, I don't know, I don't deal with the money part of stuff, but this is way more expensive uh, if you buy this from me. It's like, hey, can I just go get a piece of, um, do my thing? Yeah, go do that. Then come back and then buy mine because you'll see that it's a lot cheaper because it costs me thousands of dollars to have these. But so a little background, you have to buy a nine by minimum size in this thickness of aluminum. You have to buy a nine foot by a four foot sheet and you have to buy 10 of them, which is not cheap. And then I have them water jet cut and then I have them, the edges beveled. There's still a little bit of a burr, but there's a huge burr. Why do you have to do that? Well, if you get thin aluminum, that's about 20 to maybe 30 thousandths of an inch thick, you can use a press break and, and, and pneumatically cut it to a size. And they come in a standard, like a 12 by 12 size. You don't really get the choice. They just come that size in a sheet of aluminum. That aluminum is gonna be warped as you get it. The press breaking cutting procedure warps the edges of the aluminum. It won't press flat under your, your heat press because the edges are there. Your heat press will not have the power to <laughs> by a long shot to uh, level out the heat aluminum. So even when I get them made myself, I then have to put them in a different laminating press and then deburr them and then press them and then still throw away the ones that are warped. These are 80 thousandths of an inch thick. They are aluminum so that they don't corrode. Steel would be better than stainless steel, but far more expensive. So these are, these are planar, they're nice and flat. And then, um, and then they're polished. Uh, on one side. Now there's a sticker that says what side's down and up, but this is going to get scratches in it because it's aluminum. It's going to get scratches. And so you should still always keep a piece of paper or a magazine board between this surface and your book surface over time. But I'm going to mark these so that it's, so that you can for yourself monitor which side is towards the book and which side is away and keep custody of it, of it not getting scratched. I also deburr them and water jet cut them so that they aren't press break cut. And, um, and then that's what happened. And that's how I get them. So if you were to have that done to just one sheet, you would pay quite a bit more. So that, that's why you would, that's what they're useful for and that's why you should uh, pay for them. Um, if you want them, I have a couple hundred now, um, but uh, I have the fewest of the 15 by 15 size here. I have a lot of the uh, nine by 12 and fewer of the uh, other sizes. So um, yeah, check it out. And I also have cold press boards, which I already talked about before. Um, I'll show you about those uh, in a moment here. So forgive my lowbrow way of discussing this, but I'm going to show you what I have for the cold press boards. These are my cold press boards. They look like this. And these are the different sizes. We have like this, uh, this the budget s size here. And this is just uh, a, a clear polycarbonate. I, said, I think I said polypro, but it's polycarbonate. Uh, it's flexible. It's not completely flat. Um, it is uh, easier to scratch, and it's barely bigger than a comic book and not very heavy. That's the budget one. They're cheap. The standard one here is Lucite, and this is an eighth of an inch. Uh, Lucite, it is uh, lightweight, um, bigger than a comic book, uh, and I'll show you what those look like individually. And then this is a quarter inch Lucite. Now, this one comes with a weight. So if you really want a weight and you only need, you don't need that much weight, you need about a pound and a half. If you have lots of weights around and you're more budget conscious and you got heavy things, you just can use this middle size. If you um, want to use one of the weights I give you and you want a thicker board that's gonna last you longer, uh, get this guy here. Um, could you just use a bunch of books, um, you know, or something heavy and some 
comic book piece of paper. Yes, you can. This is only valuable because it's cooler. Uh, actually, that's not true. It is nice because you can see the wavies in a book. Like the wavies are like the, um, you know, the, the curves and the, the waves in the page. Uh, you can see them disappear over time. And so you can either pop this up a little bit and look through the plastic and see if they're coming back and put it back down without actually moving it too much. Um, or you can just kind of see them if you get down low and look at an angle, you can see that it's it's working. Um, so it is valuable that way. Otherwise, it just looks super cool. It's nice. Uh, but yeah, here you go. What do they look like? So this is um, this is the like the economy, like the budget one looks like this. You know, just barely, it's just barely bigger than the book itself, or or possibly not bigger at all, depending on the age of the book. It looks like that. It works. Put something heavy on it, you're ready to rock. The um, the elite one, the high level one, looks like that's actually not the elite one. I think this is the middle one. It looks like this. It's much thicker. You can see the book through it. Um, I can make some that you can put two books in. I can do that. Uh, I just haven't. Uh, and they're made out of lucite, and you can see they're kind of cool. It's just fun. Uh, what are the dry cleaning kits? Look, I have a, I have a advanced like a sorry this is the budget dry cleaning kit it's got your basic stuff in it it's got some these uh, q-tips that are meant for cleaning click eraser scupula melanine absorbing pad uh, this is the sponge cleaning pads microfiber cloth and then I have the sort of the standard and more expensive kit which includes you get a bunch of these dry cleaning pads you get uh, two ounces of 50 grams of absorbing, you get some melanine sponge, uh, poly eraser, click eraser, uh, you get the dusting brush to get the little eraser thingies off of it, microfiber cloth, 100 of these, and I don't know pricing and stuff, I don't deal with that, but this is what this is what I use for standard dry cleaning stuff. So people have asked, so that's what you get. Um, that is, that's the gist of it. Now on to the video. Well, um, I had promised to send some information about new pressing boards I was making. So these are my traditional 12 by 12 boards, and these are in 30,000 7 inch. But I have three new sizes in 9 by 12, 12 by 15, and 15 by 15. These are water jet cut, either 5052 or 6061 aluminum. They have slightly chamfered edges. They might have a slight burr or bevel on some of them. But, um,. Here's how they work. So, actually, let's see some difference in thicknesses and sizes. Here's a 12 by 12. This is the smallest size. These are way cheaper because these come in a. They're much easier to cut with a. You can cut them with a press break, and they're about this much smaller than the 15 by 15 standard size. But here's one difference. Uh, well, actually, let's look at a couple differences. If you can see, I'll show you the difference in thickness of these boards, and you'll see that. I don't know if it comes across here. You may not be able to see. Well, maybe. But this is much thicker. This is a little bit floppy, not really, but this is very rigid. I guess you can't really see on the camera. But, um, let's say you have two comic books. Let's say you have a comic book. You can press that just fine on a 12 by 12 press. Um, you're not going to be able to get two on here. You just can't do it. It's better if you maybe have a magazine size or something you can do it this one same thing small press you're gonna be able to get one book on there 12 by 15 you can get two books on here pretty easily nicely 15 by 15 which is sort of a standard size you can get two books easily but you can also get a magazine or one big magazine you have the option to do one larger format how do you use them well you you only need one you two is better but you may only need one what you do, I do is I preheat the bottom, and then I'll put the books on in their their sandwich with their their pressing boards, and there I'll share a pressing board here. So, um, so you know I'll put a chamfer board. This has the chamfer on the inside, here. That and the chamfer board preserves the curve of the comic book and doesn't put a line right here. So that's that's what's nice about it. And this chamfer board is. It's very thick. It's not like a normal comic book board. It is good to press against, and it gives you a nice natural curve to the book. I also put sheets of the uh, silicone paper above that, and then I'll put another pressing board 
this can be just a regular piece of paper on top just to keep any imperfections from the scratches here from imprinting onto the the books themselves I mean I guess I could show you that but I don't I think you're smart people I don't want to insult you then I'll talk about cold pressing later but then if you I, I what I do is I put one of these on top and then I heat the whole thing as a heat sink and a heat um, distributor and a pressure distributor why do I do that it's because at least my my um, there's two reasons one is that my heat press has a if you look inside of it it has a snake shape coil in the in the top element and sometimes I can see in a book the spacing of those elements it's wavy between them and not wavy where they are this helps to spread the heat and the pressure out especially if one book is slightly thicker than another and you're doing two books at once this distributes that pressure another thing is when you lift the top of the heat press the cover of the books will sometimes try to come up with it and sometimes shift things occasionally try to tear it maybe pop a staple if it's a loose staple this will allow you to break the pressure and then in a few seconds this will fall and then lift it away cleanly so that you can move this and then you won't have um, you won't have the same problem you won't it's not a, much of a concern for me when I'm doing it uh, when I use a top plate too so I use two uh, but I have this is the I suspect going to be the most popular size I, I it takes me a long time to get these uh, I had them especially water jet cut and I'm gonna brand them I'm gonna have these special uh, high temp vinyl stickers made to put on here I was gonna laser cut them but my laser is broken but um, otherwise that's how that's how those boards work um, that's it oh by the way if you want to see more this is my um, these are my Lucite cold press boards and um, that's what I use for cold pressing stuff. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. In this small heat press, which is my desktop one, there is a coil which comes in here and it runs in kind of a snake shape under here and it's heated. And it's heated not evenly. If you move a thermocouple around the top, uh, you'll see that. There's a piece of metal on here and it, and it does the same thing my metal does on the bottom. It's to distribute, but it, um, but it's, since it's constantly being heated uh, by that coil and it's not in the, it's not very thick. It's does it's not a perfect heat break or heat, sorry, heat sink. That's how I make my typical sandwich. So this is my top plate. And these are my pads. I have these two pads that I use as a, this is going to be hot and uncomfortable. I lift this up. And then, now, what did this do? Having this here, let this drop without the comic book itself sticking to this you know, sometimes the pages will um, come up and especially if you're sliding or moving you'll you'll take the book with it this helps prevent that here's my top board i have a silicone sheet i have the comic book underneath here this one i didn't put any um, chamfer boards in because of this i didn't do it because i have i'm trying to heat this plastic up and, and peel it off so my intention isn't to give it a natural curve just yet uh, in this book, although I'm not even sure I can with this weird book. It has a piece of contact paper on the cover and it's actually been written in, so it's I'm trying to get it off of there. It's curling up. That's something crazy. Look at that. And then I have this, and then I have my bottom plate that I preheat. So, uh, you know, I'm going to do this one, this one here next. This guy's going to get a cold press, by the way. So, what we're going to do is move some of these other books, the game of shuffling comic books around. <laughs> my big mess. Uh, so I'm going to cold press this guy for a while. I'm going to put him under here. And then I'll put a weight on that in a little bit. But he's going to get a cold press. You don't need much weight. Just, just a little. But next we have Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. And here's the cover of this book that I've been taking some mold off of. I'm going to... Um, press this for a little bit here and this is essentially just a loose cover um, on a book so it's not a very good example but I'm going to take uh, another board put on top in this case and then I'm going whoops this one doesn't really need a sheet because there's no well, I'll put one anyway 
little chance it's going to stick to the board, but because the ink is definitely dry on this one since it's from 1947. And then I will get this on top and I will press it here. I didn't, the bottom's already preheated because I just took another hot book off of there and I'm going to heat it up here and then I let it go for 600 seconds once it reaches temperature. That's basically it.